one from the 2017 Swiss Math Olympiad. So this is from the final and it is question seven. So let's look at the statement. We want to let n be a natural number and that natural number is chosen so that there are 2017 ordered pairs a comma b which are each natural numbers such that one over a plus one over b is equal to one over n and then our goal is to show that n is a perfect square so there's one big hint that could help you with this problem and i'll give you this hint and then maybe you can try the problem and then we'll look at the solution and that hint is to find a relationship between the solutions of 1 over a plus 1 over b equals n and the factor pairs of n squared which means that we also know something about the factor pairs of n so notice that we probably will not be able to solve for a specific value of n here. In fact, there might be lots of n's that make this kind of setup satisfied. So we probably can't find those values of n, which means if we want to show that n is a perfect square, then we need to get a handle on the factor pairs of n squared and thus the factor pairs of n in order to argue that we've got a perfect square there. Okay, so maybe you wanna try the problem with this hint and then we'll look at a solution. So hopefully you've tried this problem with the hint and now we're ready to look at a solution. So let's go ahead and suppose that AB is an ordered pair in N cross N. In other words, it is an ordered pair made up of natural numbers such that it forms a solution to this equation. So in other words, we have one over A plus one over B equals one over N. Now, instead of working in the rational numbers here, or really we've got reciprocals of natural numbers, what we'd really like to do is transport this into an equation about integers. So we're gonna go ahead and clear the fractions by multiplying by A times B times N, and that's gonna give us uh, B times N plus A times N equals A times B. Okay, now from there, I wanna rearrange this a little bit. So I'm gonna rearrange this so it's A, B minus A, N minus B, N equals zero. Now I've left a little gap there because I want to introduce something here so that I can factor the left-hand side. And I've got to admit, like I've done a bunch of these Olympiad type problems and the first time I came across this factoring trick, I thought it was kind of peculiar, but now it showed up in several of these solutions. So I think this is actually a pretty common trick for these math Olympiad type problems is to complete this kind of trinomial into a four term object which will factor. And the way to do that in this case is to um, add n squared to both sides. So notice adding n squared to the left hand side allows us to factor this as a minus n times b minus n. So let's just check that that works out. So we have a times b, then we have minus a times n minus b times n, and then plus n squared. So that's good. And then over here we have n squared. The next thing to notice is that one over a and one over b are both positive. One over n is obviously positive as well. So that means it's easy to see that one over a is less than one over n and one over b is less than one over n. And that's true because they sum to one over n, but they're both positive numbers that sum to one over n. So that tells us that a is bigger than n and b is bigger than n. But that tells us that a minus n and b minus n are bigger than or equal to one. In other words, they're natural numbers. But we're multiplying two natural numbers together, a minus n and b minus n, and we're achieving n squared. But that's exactly the same thing as saying that a minus n and b minus n are factor pairs of n squared. So let's just write that down. A minus n comma B minus n um, is a factor pair of n squared. So let's see what we've done here. We have started with a solution to this equation and we've created a factor pair of n squared. And also each of these steps was reversible. So in other words, we've built a one-to-one -one correspondence between factor pairs of n squared and solutions to this equation. Now I'm gonna erase the board and then we will pick up with that fact. 
on the previous board we achieved the following fact and that is if a comma b which is an ordered pair of natural numbers is a solution to this equation 1 over a plus 1 over b equals 1 over n then that statement is equivalent to a minus n comma b minus n is a factor pair of n squared so in other words we have a bijection from this set uh, which is given by solutions to the equation 1 over a plus 1 over b equals 1 over n so that's one set and then the other set will be factor pairs of n squared and the correspondence of that bijection is this ordered pair turns into this ordered pair and vice versa but now the next thing that we can do is rewrite these factor pairs of n squared in the following way. So this is the same thing as, as ordered pairs st in n uh, cross n such that s times t equals n squared. That's what we mean by factor pairs. But now here it looks like we've got two degrees of freedom because we've got s and t. But the fact that they multiply together to n squared really only gives us one degree of freedom. So we can rewrite this as s comma n squared divided by s such that s is a natural number and s divides n squared so that's another way to write down the factor pairs of n squared so now notice that since our only degree of freedom here is s and the condition given on this degree of freedom is that s divides n squared we can rewrite this as s in natural numbers such that s divides n squared in other words this is the set of divisors of n squared okay so let's see where we've landed we've started with the solutions to the equation 1 over a plus 1 over b equals 1 over n and we've shown that that set is in one-to-one -one correspondence with the set of divisors of n squared but the thing that we're given in the problem is that this set that we started with on the left hand side has 2017 elements and this bijection tells us that n squared has 2017 divisors so that is the conclusion that we have so far n squared has 2017 divisors again and that all follows from this bijection which we have constructed okay i'll bring this to the top and then we'll finish it off on the last board we argued via a bijection of sets that n squared has 2017 divisors and so that's where this 2017 comes in recall that n was chosen so that this equation right here had 2017 solutions that constructed these 2017 divisors of n squared now the next thing that we want to do is use the fundamental theorem of arithmetic to write n as a product of primes and their powers so we'll write this as p1 to the r1 all the way up to pk to the rk where these pi's are distinct primes so let's just recall the fundamental theorem of arithmetic says that every natural number has a factorization into primes and so that's what we've done here great now the next thing that we want to do is notice that this implies that n squared is equal to p1 to the 2r1 all the way up to pk to the 2rk so now we know that n squared has 2017 divisors now we have assumed that n squared has this prime factorization so from here what we want to do is count the number of divisors of n squared from this prime factorization so and we can do that by noting that every divisor of n squared will have essentially the same prime factorization except we can allow zeroth powers of the primes in other words let's notice that d divides n squared if d equals p1 to the let's say maybe s1 all the way up to pk to the sk where these si's come from the set 0 up to 2ri so let's notice that this set has exactly 2ri plus 1 elements 
So that's because we're counting from zero up to two ri. So this gives us a pretty simple way to count the number of divisors of n squared. And that is by counting the possibilities for the exponents in each of these primes. So like we pointed out here, there are two r i plus one choices for each of these exponents. And since we're making a choice for each of these primes, we take the product of those choices. So in other words, n squared has 2r1 plus 1 times 2r2 plus 1 all the way up to 2rk plus 1 divisors. And so that comes from our choice from the exponent of p1, our choice for the exponent of p2, all the way up to our choice for the exponent of pk. But by our previous argument, we know that n squared has 2,017 divisors. So that gives us the following equation, 2r1 plus 1 all the way up to 2rk plus 1 equals 2,017. But 2,017 is prime, which you can check fairly easily, which means we have a factorization of a prime number. But factorizations of prime numbers aren't really possible. So what that means is we really only have a single term in this product on the left-hand side. In other words, k is equal to one. That's gonna collapse this down to a single term in the product. So let's just go ahead and say that p1 is equal to p and r1 is equal to r. So in other words, we have two r plus one equals 2017. But what that tells us is that r equals 1008. So that's pretty easy to check just by symbolic manipulation. But now let's take this fact that there's only a single prime factorization in n, and we know the exponent in that prime factor is 1008, and we'll bring that up here and finish it off. Okay, so we just argued that if we start with n with its prime factorization p1 to the r1 up to pk to the rk, then in fact, there is only a single prime in this prime factorization, which we called p. And furthermore, we were able to figure out what the exponent associated with that prime was, and that exponent was equal to 1008. But we can rewrite this in a clever way as p to the 504 times 2, but then with exponent rules, that's the same thing as p to the 504 squared. In other words, we have n is a perfect square, which was the goal of this problem. And that's a good place to stop.